Hello and welcome again to Philip's Cop and a chance to look at some more of the beautiful plants of the Fainbos. But what is Fainbos? Fainbos is a type of habitat. It's the habitat that we get here on the slopes of Philip's Cop and through most of the Cape Flora. It comes from a word from the early European settlers meaning fine bush. So when those first explorers came to what is now Cape Town, what they most needed was timber, wood, to build forts, to build houses, to repair their boats. But what they found was mostly this Fainbos. Not even good enough for firewood. But what is it that defines it as a vegetation type? Well, the best way of knowing Fainbos is by the presence of three particular plant groups. First is proteas and members of a protea family. The second is ericas and erica-like plants. And the third is restios and members of a restio family. So we're going to look at some of those today and get a feel for what is it that defines Fainbos. Probably the best known element of Fainbos are the proteas and members of a protea family. And here we have one of the best known of the proteas themselves, the king protea. Protea sinoroides. Protea sinoroides is found more or less throughout the Cape Flora and is immediately recognisable by these huge flower heads that they have. So when you see a protea flower head, it's not a single flower. And these bits are actually not part of a flower, but they are bracts that surround lots and lots of individual flowers. So if we look in here, you've got this cone made up of lots of individual flowers. So one of these is actually a flower and the perianth segments around it, the central pollen presenter, and you can see the pollen coming off on my fingers. So in a head like this, you have 100 or more flowers contained with a central flower head. So where you see members of a protea family, you're almost always going to be within Fainbos. Protea sinoroides, the king protea. The second key component that defines Fainbos are members of the genus Erica. So within the Cape Flora, you have over 800 species in the genus Erica. Roughly one in ten of every species that you find in the Cape Floral Kingdom belongs to the genus. So to say what is a typical member of the genus is quite hard, but in some ways here is one. This is Erica nudiflora. You can see that it has these very fine needle-like leaves. That's very usual for the genus. They're good at conserving water. You have towards the end of the stem these little clusters of pink flowers. Pink is certainly a very common colour within the genus Erica. These in this case are tubular in shape but they can be cup shaped or even bell shaped. And out the end you can see the stamens protruding. The style will be in there as well. So the genus has lots of different shapes, of different colours, uh, and occur in most parts of the Fainbos. This is Erica nudiflora, which is found particularly on these shale patches of the Fainbos, and it gets its name because although most of the plant, although it's hard to see, is covered in a very fine down, so the stems and the leaves have little hairs on them, the flowers themselves don't have any hairs on them. And nudiflora means naked flower. And so because it lacks hairs on the flowers, 
it gets this name. It's perfect for bee pollination, so bees love these pink colour and very easy to access for nectar in these short tubes. The third element that defines Fainbos are the restios, or members of a restionaceae. Here we have Thamnocortus lucens, and it may be not as flamboyant as either the proteas or the ericas, but it is a key constituent that makes up Fainbos, and in many ways it is more defining of Fainbos than the other two. So if you went up to the Drakensberg, you would find the grasslands there. And you might well find proteas there and ericas growing, but it's not Fainbos because there is a lack of restios within the vegetation. Restios look like grasses, but grasses aren't that common within Fainbos. There are some grasses within Fainbos, but the best way of telling a grass from a restio is the presence, or absence, so to speak, of leaves. So if you look at a restio, you will see that up the stem there are these sheaths. And these sheaths were the leaves. That's all that's left of the leaves of a restio, these brown sheaths that clasp the stem. Whereas if you look at a grass, like this grass, Simbapogon, you can see that up the stem there are genuine leaves coming out up the stem. Key thing about restios is that they come in both male and female plants. So this is the male plant with its dangly inflorescence, and next door We have a female plant with an upright inflorescence here and here. Uh, but it's got the same similar leaf sheaths to it, and so you can tell that they belong to the same species. You can see there's a male growing in amongst it here, but it's actually two separate plants growing intertwined. If you look down at the base, of Thamnocortus lucen. You'll see lots and lots of what look like thin leaves, but actually you've got here not true leaves, but lots of fine small stem growths. And if you look closely you would see the same little sheaths that surround the stem and what would have been the true leaves. So that's the third and last major element that helps to define Fainbos, members of the family Restionaceae. So Proteas, Ericas and Restios are the three elements that define Fainbos. But they're certainly not the only plants you find in Fainbos. There's a multitude of other groups, families, and species which occur within the Fainbos, which are confined to the Fainbos. It's just that they don't define Fainbos in that way. So you might find members of a daisy family in Fainbos, and there's a lot of them, but you will also find members of a daisy family over in the Rhinosterfelt, or down in the Strandfelt, or in the grasslands of the Drakensberg. So these other elements can be part of Fainbos, but we don't define Fainbos in the same way as the proteoids, the ericoids, and the restioids. Here we have Trichocephalus stipularis. It is very much one of the components of a Cape Flora and the Fainbos. You can see that the leaves are very similar to many ericas with these needle-like and in curve below. But it belongs to the family Ramnaceae, and Ramnaceae is best known for the genus Phylica. And actually this genus 
used to be a part of Phylica, but it was separated out because Trichocephalus has little stipules at the base of a leaf. They're quite hard to see, but you can see little black marks just at the base. Those are little stipules which make this belong to the genus Trichocephalus, whereas Phylica has no stipules at the base of a leaf. This is the only species in the genus, so it's easy to identify. But like Phylica, what you are actually seeing as the flower are actually the sepals covered in this white fur. And here you can see the inside of the sepals is this pink colour. The actual petals are hidden within the tube. The best thing about Trichocephalus though, and why I love it as an autumn flowering plant, is it produces this wonderful honey-scented aroma at this time of year. So on a still day, like today, with a bit of warmth, you can just smell Trichocephalus from a distance. Its common name is sometimes known as dog face, but you wouldn't understand that until the fruits are produced. It produces these little trilocular fruits, which some people liken to the face of a dog. An important element of a Fainbos, and one which is very popular with many people, are the geophytes, or the bulbs. But it doesn't define Fainbos in the same way as the Proteas, Ericas and Restios, because you also find a lot of bulbs in vegetation types like Rhinosterfelt. But here we have one of the autumn flowering bulbs of a Fainbos, Empodium plicatum a member of the Hypoxidaceae, sometimes known as autumn stars. They come out around April time, out of the ground, and the leaves come up later. You can just see the leaves starting to come. And they are often pleated, which is where the name Plicatum comes from. It looks very similar to a spring flowering member of the Hypoxidaceae we get as well, called Poridia capensis with very similar star-like flowers. But with Empodium, the ovary is not at the base of a flower, which is where you would expect it, and it is in Peridia, but the ovary is right down here, almost at ground level. You can just make out a sort of swelling in the flower stalk, and that's where the ovary is with the ovules and where the seeds will develop. So that's Empodium plicatum. Although Restios may define Fainbos, that doesn't mean that every grass-like plant has to be a Restio. One of the elements which you'll find in Fainbos are the sedges. And here we have a sedge, Ficinia deusta. And sedges can often look like Restios, but as with the grasses, they have true leaves often clustered around the base. So here we have the base of Ficinia with these lovely sheaths on them. And the inflorescence is there. And then you've got some true leaves around it coming up. They also differ from Restios in that, unlike having separate male and female plants, most of the sedges you'll find the male and female flowers within the same inflorescence. So here you can see the stamens protruding from the inflorescence, and just there you can see the styles coming out as well. So within the same inflorescence you've got both male and female parts. Ficinia deusta. So thank you for joining me on another walk through the Fainbos and I hope that's given you a better idea of what it is that actually defines Fainbos, the presence of particular groups of plants, members of a protea family, of the Ericas, and Erica-like plants, and of a Restio family. So next time you're able to get out again, look around, 
and work out whether you're walking through Fainboss or maybe some other sort of vegetation. Thanks for watching and I hope we'll be able to get out again soon.